Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast, a production from Empowering Pumps and Equipment as the voice of the pump and related equipment industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 71 of the Empowering Industry Podcast. This is coming out on August the 30th, 2021. And if you don't know, college football is about to start this weekend. So I'm so excited. Yes. And so we'll I'll, we'll dress up for that next. Maybe uh, wear our favorite team's gear or something like that. I'm already but, in maroon. Anyone? Yes. <laughs> so she's ready. She was prepared. I yes. wasn't. Um, anyway, I'm your host, Charlie Matthews, and I'm joined by my awesome co-host, Bethany Walmack. Hey, Charlie. Hello to all of our listeners. We're so excited that you're back with us. And thanks for choosing us like you do every week. We're going to tell you something you need to know about social, uh, preview the news from Empowering Pumps and Equipment, and then introduce you to an industry influencer. We're going to get back to our roots, Charlie. And I want to know how your week was. I had a great week. It was a busy week. Um, I did learn a couple of things about my routine. Like if I get interrupted and I miss my morning routine, I'm kind of thrown off the whole day. So it's really important. So, so, you know, hang on to those treasured moments in the morning, yeah. I guess. Um, Don't snooze also, the alarm, like get up and yes. just start. <laughs> it's time. I tried to tell Carly that for sure. She, she yeah. snoozed. She missed the bus one day cause she just snoozed her alarm. Um, <laughs> Andrew starts playing football for his eighth grade team. He's going to be the running back and he plays linebacker, but he, this week he found out he was going to be starting running back and he was so happy. Um, so what's their mascot? Checked, He's the, uh, the Jaguars or the Jag- Jags. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go Jags. Go Jags. Go Jags. Uh, Yes. <laughs> anyway, so we have a big week next week. A uh, lot busy. I'm traveling next week to Chicago. So I'm just a lot of planning, a lot of fun, um, a lot of work, uh, which is great. You know, I like work. What about you? She, How was your week? She is doing a lot of work because it's causing me to have to do a lot of work, people. So. True story. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but it's good. It's good work that we can feel proud of. And we're excited that we're getting out through all of the empowering brands. Uh, one of the big things I spent a lot of time on this week was I was logged into our YouTube account for work every single day, uploading videos. So there's a lot of new content there for all of our YouTube followers. And if you're not a follower, shame on you and go and follow us on YouTube. So you get all the updates, but we put out three different lunch and learns from Vince that I think are really awesome. And Inventors Month one, where Larry talks, Larry Backus, the pump guy, talks about his invention process and and what you could do if you're a, an aspiring inventor. Uh, there's a video about pressure instruments protecting pumps, and then an IIoT eliminating downtime. Just like really good in the weeds kind of industry video content that I think is awesome that you'll like. And then you can be like, Hey, Bethany, good job working to get all those videos yes. up. That's what all of you can tell me. And then what Absolutely. else? Absolutely. On a personal note, uh, it's my sister-in-law's 50th birthday uh, this happy weekend. Happy birthday. So we, yeah, happy birthday, Robin. We've been doing a little party prep uh, to get some decorations set up for her. So it's been fun. I love party prep. I love I, I love balloons. making parties look cool. Yes. No, there, yes. we have balloons. And it was fortuitous because Bowen's uh, birthday party, he wanted a Star Wars party. So I had tons of black and gray balloons that I'm just repurposing for Robin's 50th birthday. So... I love it. Fun times. Love it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, let's get started with our updates. We're going to talk about the Empowering Women Conference that's coming up. Right now, we are celebrating, I guess, and accepting the award nominations. They go, um, you can, you can, um, I don't know why I can't talk right now. I'm so excited <laughs> about it, I guess. Uh, but basically, the nominations are open now until September the 10th. So please think about who you can nominate. There's 12 categories for the awards. Um, all the no- nominees will be featured. Is that right, Bethany? Yes. She's, yes, again, 100%. doing that work. Yeah. Now, <laughs> uh, I think featured- that's like the most important part of uh, my job's <laughs> promoting empowering women is to make sure that we share all these awesome women. So it's happening. It's going to happen. Get me those nominations. Yes. And so it it really is easy. It takes less than 10 minutes. So think about it, fill out the form. We'll make it look awesome to celebrate them. And yeah, join us. I'm excited about the event in in general, but 
this is what we're really um, trying to do to support these women and shine a light on them. So um, we need your help. I love it. The event is actually on October 21st. It's in Chicago, the day after WEFTEC. There's an in-person option to attend as well as a virtual option to attend. And uh, inside note, early bird pricing is going to end, I think it's August 31st. Um, So that's tomorrow. You're listening to this on Monday the 30th. That's tomorrow. So make sure you go and register for that event so you can take advantage of the early bird pricing. And we do still have a few sponsorships available for uh, companies out there that are looking for a way to support us. We appreciate it. And don't feel like you're late either because we've had some really powerful sponsors just sign up. And I think everybody just kind of had to figure out, okay, what's our game plan for this quarter? And okay, let's go. Let's be there. Let's be present. So I'm excited um, because we have some awesome sponsors. We'll get into that on one of the shows coming up. Yeah. Uh, you can check them out on the website if you're really curious. I you love it. get social? Yeah. This is where we're going to tell you something you need to know about social media. And today uh, it's, it's a little spicy because it's all my hot takes on my week on social media, but uh, we can get to that in a minute. Charlie, go ahead and invite everyone to our meetups. Yes. So our virtual meetups, uh, so you just need to be in front of your computer um, on September the 8th for Empowering Women. It's a Wednesday. It's every second Wednesday at 11 central time. And then our Empowering Brands is Tuesday, September the 21st, every third Tuesday at 3 p.m. central time. Super fun time. Pre-register for those so you get sent the Zoom link and then be ready to turn that camera on so we can say hi. You know what? On that note, we should give shout outs. We should give shout outs for people who actually attend, um, you know, and are willing to let us give them a shout out. Uh, but we want I don't really care. Want I you- don't need their permission. I'm just going to say <laughs> thank you. I'm going to take a picture of you. Actually, I do this all the time. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. I take a picture she of the warns you. Box. Um, and yeah, I want everybody to be smiling and happy, not, you know, thinking about something very, you know. <laughs> Uh, anyway, stay connected with us at empowering pumps using the hashtag empowering industry podcast. We watch that. Bethany's going to tell you all about it. And so on that note, I'll turn it over to you, Bethany. Um, yeah. So my shout outs that I have for the week, um, all week I have been point person on social listening for empowering pumps. So I have been on empowering pumps, social media a lot this week, and I saw so many people interacting. And so I had a couple of shout outs from that and what I've seen. Um, number one shout out I want to give is to last week's person of the week, who is Ruben Gonzalez Aldama. We talked about him in last week's podcast. He's from Panametrics. He had so many friends and colleagues who shared his uh, his story, his feature on LinkedIn. Almost like every other update that I had this week was someone sharing his story. And I just thought like, wow, we know you're awesome because we shared your awesome story. But you have all these people who also think you're great and wanted to share you. So uh, he was one of Which my- Which I think is awesome when they're yeah. willing to share it because, and that's different than like liking it. Sharing it, it shows up on your page. It's just like yeah. an extra happy. Um, I love it. So me too. My other shout out is for Victor Dragano, um, who posts and talks about Pump Talk, hashtag Pump Talk on Instagram quite frequently. He works with Hydrocell. He's from Jakarta. Uh, and so I kind of like got to look at some of his fun pictures of, of his life there in Jakarta because it's his Instagram. So we get some personal content in there too. Uh, but I just wanted to say thanks for using hashtag pump talk in your posts. And I, this week, I'm definitely going to post a shout outs post to our social media and tag these people so that they know to come and listen to me say awesome things about them. <laughs> I'm so glad that you said that because it was something I was going to bring up after the call, uh, but I didn't want to throw you off. But my shout out is is um, Sonia Matura. She is just a powerhouse when it comes to connecting and sharing content, but she likes and all of our stuff, both personal and professional. She is just there. Um, I got to do an interview with her, which um, you, you know, I'm sending work to you to kind of get ready for next week, but she is just awesome uh, creating and really, you know, building that uh, maintenance community for us. And so I, I love it. So that's my shout out. So give her some high fives there. Awesome. Okay. So our main story that we're talking about on social today, let's get social, 
are the five lessons that I learned from a week of social listening. So like I said, all week I've been point person for our Empowering Pumps team on interacting through our Empowering Pumps account. Uh, which has been really fun and I've learned a lot. Uh, and just so just so you know and our listeners know, when we say social listening, we're talking about you know the process of monitoring our social media channels uh, for mentions, for shares, for likes, um, for people talking about our products, and then interacting with people and, and hearing what our audience is saying. And um, there are some automated tools that can help with that. And I'm sure like we can tell you about that in a future podcast. But this week... We just kind of went back to basics. I personally, like I was checking the activity on our LinkedIn page. I clicked through so many hashtags on Instagram, did a ton of searches on Twitter. Um, and I think my thumbs might fall off from liking and commenting <laughs> on so many posts. But uh, one cool thing is that I feel like I learned more about empowering pumps in our business um, and what we do and who we interact with. And, you know, that was valuable knowledge, I think, for me as an employee to learn what we do better, you know? Yeah. I think it's a interesting. It's like a research, right? Like it's, it's this listening and it's research about your company. So if you, you know, need a different way of thinking about it versus social media, this is research on what your company does, what your competitor does, what your you know customers are doing and what they stand for. So, um, I think it's definitely worth the time. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is how you can get more engagement, the interactions on the posts um, actually help. The more interactions you have, the more of the post will you know show up. And so I want to just kind of think through that. It, I know it's the algorithm and pretty much if you comment on social platforms, you comment on the likes you um, engage with or you know have different interactions, we could go on and on about that. I mean, I think the best thing to do is to actually have a well thought out comment on the post. It's a little harder to do than just liking. <laughs> harder said okay. than done. Yes. <laughs> yes. We understand, but it's definitely worth it because it's going to help your, your post show up. It's going to help you uh, really find engagement in people that you like. Um, so you can drive that by interacting with different pages and accounts by responding to comments on yes, as a, um, a person, but also as a company, which is what Bethany was doing. And how do you do that? You know, what do you say? Well, you can start by just thanking people for sharing a post. Uh, I think that's the easiest way um, to get things started. And then, you know, dive in and think, okay, who is this person? What can we do to uh, really engage with them, to add value to them? Okay. Other than that encouragement and that thank you. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I could go on and on, but I feel like we have a process. So I don't want to mess up our process no, here. Uh, you're okay. fine. The, we can just chat about this because I feel like you and I could just talk all day probably about this. But like, I think it's almost like a loop, like an interaction loop, because the more you comment, it's going to then show up on people's feed more frequently, like two days after you posted because someone just posted a comment. Then it'll make someone comment again. And then you're kind of like back to the start of the circle and it just keeps going. And so for those really good posts that have good reach, adding interaction can really get you a lot more eyes on the post. Um, That's right. And when you when you maybe have less creative too, it just made me think about mm -hmm. this. Um, you know, you create really one good post and it, you, you send it out and then you wait. Okay, if somebody comments or likes it, then this gives you an opportunity for it to show up again without having to create a whole new post. And so you just can, can create that engagement or, you know, it's showing up again uh, yeah. without a brand new post. Perfect. Um, so the second lesson I learned was really, I got to see what content worked best for us this week. Um, and so obviously anything with people. So our person of the week, our speakers for our leadership summit, people just, like to see people. They want to share their friends. They want uh, they want to share themselves. You know, the speakers are sharing the posts that are promoting them. Um, another type of post that I saw a lot of interaction on was our partners sharing technical content that went that we pushed out. And that you can go back a few episodes and listen to us talk about advocate marketing because that's an example of empowering pumps being an advocate partner with like with our partners and being an advocate for them and pushing out their social content. And then you know we have salespeople and engineers from those partners that are then sharing that content to their audience and they're getting some more. Um, I get like cloud or it's like, you know, like, Hey, someone else is talking about us in a good way. And so they're sharing our content. Um, 
And then my Absolutely. favorite. That's the value. I'm sorry. Yes. To, well, Go I'll let it. you get to your favorite, but, but I feel like that is so important because, you know, you can talk about yourself all day long and when mm-hmm. somebody else does it, it has more value. It just does. And it gives you some, a different perspective uh, to respond to that post. So I, I think that's key for us. Yeah. Which takeaway from this would be, um, post content about other people and about other companies. Yes. They're going to share Absolutely. it for sure. Uh, but another type of content that I saw, just get tons of interaction. Like the most interaction we've had on a Facebook post in a while. Uh, dogs, dogs. Everybody loves dogs. It was uh, National Dog Day yesterday. So we got to share mm-hmm. all of our Pump Talk pets or Pump Talk pups. And mm-hmm. uh, people were sharing pictures of their dogs, uh, like Michelle Segrist's sailing dogs that she has. Yes. Um, a really big Great Dane that was bigger than a child in a picture that I thought was really fun. Uh, but I think finding a post that uh, connects with people on a personal level that's maybe outside of the scope of what you sell or what you talk about on the normal can get lots of interaction. So post a dog. Yeah, it- and it makes you see the human side of, of us and in your company, uh, which I thought your post was great with all of our, <laughs> with our puppies. Uh, and so, you know, look for that. And if you, you know, want a tip here, a little social media tip, the national calendar, okay, you just Google that and, and you can see all these different days of the year and see how you can plug in um, your company into these. Um, all of our people love dogs here. So this makes perfect sense that we will. <laughs> have this on our social media day. So, okay. What was I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about what you should say to keep a conversation going. We touched on this a little bit, but start with thanking people. That's easy. Thank you for sharing the post. Um, and not, don't just like it, actually comment that and, and thank them in the comments, um, citing something that you liked in their content. We have some really great people to shout out about that. Um, mm-hmm. Leroy for one. And Ahmed was do- Ar- Ar- Ahmed was doing it this week um, where he was kind of following Leroy's lead and, and adding in some links and some so you know, great. real comments. Yes. Um, have some personality, even though you're interacting with the company's page. It's important to have fun. We're fun. It's one of my you know core values to be professional and fun <laughs> here. And so we can talk about that you know, as our company, we can share and like and comment in a fun way, even though you are with your personal brand. Um, And our favorite we talked about was, you know, the Pump Talk Pumps and also being a cheerleader for the people in the industry. Absolutely. One of our favorite things to do is to share the spotlight with all of you amazing people. So, you know, let us know who you are. I can't say that enough. I think that was probably like that third lesson, the what what to say to keep the conversation going was maybe the hardest to learn and mm-hmm. the hardest to do as I'm doing everything this week. Because there's only so many ways you can say thanks for sharing this post without sounding like a bot that's just copying yes. and pasting the same exact thing. And so, you know, figuring out the kind of a personal way to connect with them to include in that post so they know it's a real person that read it and uh, is commenting. Um, One thing I didn't talk practice. about is that is the link, right. To be able to link to something of value and we can, it's just another way to share resources. So make sure that, you know, you think through the post, okay, how would I respond to this? What could I share where people could go and learn more? Because that's why they're there, especially on LinkedIn. They're there to learn more and to be educated and find resources. Agree. Okay. So the fourth lesson that I learned this week, um, was you need to make time to be intentional, Um, while doing this. It's really key to making it a success and like making your time worthwhile. So what I did that worked for me was that I tried to do it in the morning when I would wake up before the kids would wake up and I'm just hanging out drinking some coffee. Um, So I would set aside like 30 minutes every morning to kind of look through um, the things, look through our social media networks and interact a bit. And then throughout the day as I would have short breaks, because it was something I could do on my phone. and, And this week, I had the boys home. And so it was, it was a good thing I could do while they're watching their TV program or whatever. I can do it on my phone. Um, so th- you have to make sure that you're covering all the channels. I did the four big ones, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And what I kind of did was focus on one a day where that was going to be my main focus. So yesterday was LinkedIn. And so I like made sure that I spent the majority of my time on LinkedIn and then just kind of checked in on the others. And then 
my tip for this is to set some goals for yourself so that you know what you're trying to accomplish with this. And for me, it was I wanted to be able to send Vince, our salesperson, uh, at least some kind of connection or company or lead, possible lead that I could send him every day from something I was looking at. And then I wanted to comment on five plus posts a day. And so that was kind of my metric that I was going for that when I had done that for the day, I'm like, okay, I can, I can stop scrolling Instagram and it, it'll be okay. I've, I've done my job today. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's so important. You have to have those goals and you have to have a, a set time to do that. I also do my listening first thing in the morning. Uh, part of mine is to find someone to encourage um, straight out the gate, kind of share, show that gratitude. Um, also, I think it's important to set that side, set aside that time because you're going to get busy. You're going to be distracted with that, you know, task list, to-do list, um, and you're going to put something else in front of it. So let's just start our day and find a way that we can engage with our audience. And, you know, I think it's also really key to kind of take a look in the morning. Maybe you forgot what day it was. What's a special day that you maybe, you know, forgot that you needed to post about that was really important to your company. So I think I can't starting tell our day, you how many. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times ahead. I get a message from Charlie at like eight 30 in the morning. It's like, did you remember that today <laughs> is this day? And I'd be like, I need to check the content calendar, but yeah, give me an hour and I'll get something out. That's right. Um, and but you know what? I think it's great. Other people look to us too, to see yeah. our posts and mm-hmm. then they create posts. So as that leader in social media, I think that's why I like to do it in the morning. To, just in case, you know, just in yeah. case we forgot something, because um, we're we're all human here, okay, and we are not we're not the bot, okay. We do yeah. have to like do the research and plan, and um, we don't know everything. And sometimes like, we see something that's super cool that we want to <laughs> share and be a part of, and so we're adding it to our calendar. So it may not be that we forgot, maybe yeah. like, oh, this is something awesome, um, and I think you're awesome. So <laughs> you know, there's that. Okay, what do we? Okay. What's our last? My last lesson that I learned this week is that a lot of people need to clean up their social media. Uh, Because one of the things that I was doing, um, specifically on Twitter, was where I noticed it the most, was that when I saw people interacting with our posts, liking a bunch of our tweets, I would go and look at their Twitter profile to see what company they worked for, what they're about, and then go find them on LinkedIn so I could possibly send Vince a lead. And um, on Twitter... Everything you do is going to show up. I can see what you like. I can see what you comment on. And there were several, like, there was definitely a couple of people that I looked at their their Twitter, what all they had done. And I was like, I don't want to work with this person uh, based They're on- a little the- sketch based on the things they're posting, I'm not even going to send it to Vince. And for us, uh, that's just, you know, a loss of a loss. I don't think it's really a loss because you don't want to work with people that that don't share your core values or whatever. But that's just a loss Mm -hmm. of a potential client for you as a person. That might mean it's the loss of, you know, like someone you could have made a sale to that saw a post that you made and that had it was profanity ridden or whatever and decided they didn't want to um, buy from you. And so I think it's really important uh, to, to take some time, be intentional, even if it means setting up two Twitter accounts that you can say whatever you want on your personal one, but then the one you interact with for business, keep clean. I don't it's, know. It's so true. I, I have, preach this, I guess, um, as far as your personal brand and how you're being seen and represented, you want to be able to, um, you know, we've talked about this before. I want to be able to like my no doubt and Gwen Stefani posts and, and I see Ellen's comments or whatever and not be tied to business. And so I've always kind of had those two things different. I don't have a separate Twitter account anymore. I did try to do that. I can't keep up with that. Um, and so I, I think it's just, look at how, how you're being, how you want to be seen. You know, you need to know what your personal brand stands for. And especially, you know, if you want to work with us, um, you know, be nice to people. That's yeah. huge. Okay. That positivity is part of our brand. Um, so I absolutely am with you. It's, it's definitely a key lesson. Okay. You are the master at social listening, social media in general. You're leading this charge Tell me, like, what did I miss? What's an important lesson that I should have learned this week or that I could have gotten more of? Well, I think we all are going to learn a different lesson when we are, you know, interacting with social. That's why I want all of our team to do it, even if it's not their job necessarily to listen Mm -hmm. on social. Because 
you you take an act, you take back a different perspective. You also see how difficult it is to engage with people, right? So have some <laughs> pr- appreciation for that. Yeah. Um, and then you know, I think just. I want to thank you for going back to basics, for spending the time to improve our social listening, but also so that we can help others improve that. Um, And so I just want to thank you for doing that. I think we could go on for days about social because we love it. And I think it's because there's a lot of value there um, in really helping people connect and engage. That's what it's about. Okay. So we'll continue to to think through that and figure out better ways. And honestly, go back and look at empowering pumps this week and how Bethany engaged with people. Um, I was all, I was really happy to see uh, the Instagram comment from empowering pumps talking about, you know, clogging and wipes and like, when are people going to stop flushing these wipes? We're uh, tired of telling people this same thing over and over again. Stop flushing the wipes. Stop flushing the wipes. <laughs> yes. Just, just stop it. Um, okay. But then, you know, the other side of that is, you know, we've got some really cool grinder pump companies that we can support, uh, and say, Hey, they've got a solution for that. Um, however, stop doing it. Uh, okay. So I think we can get into the news now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, last takeaway, use pump talk on things. We'll share it on Instagram. Um, I'll, we'll check those posts. We'll share it to our stories. Just use it, um, and interact with us to, uh, share more things. Okay. Yes. But like Charlie said, into the news. I love that one. Me too. Okay. This is where we're going to preview some news coming out on Empowering Pumps and Equipment newsletter this week, coming to your inbox two times a week. We're going to start with the person of the week. And this week it's Daniel Rains. He's an associate product engineer at Emerson Automation Solutions. And he's been there for 14 years. Anytime anyone's at a company for that long, I'm like, this must be a good company to work for. They must be an awesome person. Yeah. Tell me more about that. And he does. He tells us there's several aspects about his job that he is enjoying. Um, One, cutting edge software and hardware. So shout out to Emerson uh, about their awesome products. Um, And then additionally, he says he's fond in assisting his customers and the team atmosphere um, in his product engineering department. And I love that. You know, that team atmosphere is important. and, And we're just you know, thankful that they shared and nominated you uh, to be a part of this, Daniel. So thank you. You've got some big shoes to fill and hopefully your coworkers like you just as much as last week's person did. So you get shared uh, a lot, but he's awesome. Check out his feature. There'll be a link in the show notes as well as post it to our social media and uh, nominate someone, you know, so we can highlight them as well. Yes. Okay. So my first news item is Armstrong Fluid Technology. Armstrong introduces the industry's first self-regulating variable speed fire pump with fire manager. Okay, this is important. Um, I love Armstrong and all of their technology attached to the pumps, okay? But this um, is a new connected service for tracking pump performance. Uh, Some of the benefits of design envelope fire pump with fire pump manager and self-regulating variable speed technologies are it's a, drum it's a mouthful, but that's, I mean, it's, it's a lot of important things, but man, yes. it's a mouthful. I'm impressed, Charlie. Thank you. Well, I do love the design envelope. We've talked about that uh, before. Yeah. So, um, but this has cost savings up to 1500 per sprinkler branch per floor. Um, it increases design flexibility, increases reliability and safety, the ability to predict and report potential equipment failure, which we know is important, and the reduction of the number of zones in a sprinkler system and the potential elimination of storage tanks. All good things, all yeah. cost savings. Um, wonderful. Thank you, Armstrong, for yet another great um, introduction to our industry. Yeah, I love it. Okay, the story I'm going to preview for everyone comes to us from Surumi, uh, one of our partners who we always like sharing their information. Uh, and the title or the 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 story that I'm sharing is that Surumi's automatic bar screen it proves ideal solution for a wastewater plant in Southeast Michigan. Um, basically, a Surumi KW bar screen ended the problem of frequently clogged pumps at this wa- wastewater treatment plant in Port Austin in Michigan's Huron County. I'm learning so many things about all of the different places, and which also highlights to me wastewater's everywhere. There's treatment facilities everywhere. Our industry's huge. Um, 
Sorry. And I bet it was wipes that clogged the pumps. For sure. <laughs> well, that's in my next bullet. <laughs> oh. 100%. My bad. No, you're good. Definitely wipes. So the previous screens they were using, they were having to be manually cleared three times a day uh, because they were getting clogged by wipes, by bottles, by other random things. And um, now with the installation of Surumi's, um, uh, sorry, the installation of Surumi's bar screen, um, they the installation cost around 10% um, off from the a quoted other price. And it gave a cost-effective system for smaller towns and municipalities. And it allowed them to not have to manually clean it three times a day, which just makes things I mean, so much I more gotta efficient. I got to say 10%, um, 10% and you're, you know, going against the cost of your competitor or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's something, but like not to be able to, not to have to go out there and like clean that up manually yes. is a winner. <laughs> so um, I, I sign me up. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. There it's got a lot of good information in this article. We'll have the link in the show notes, but uh, a really cool case study of how this product worked for a wastewater treatment facility. Very cool. Okay. <laughs> It's my favorite part. Into our interview, Charlie went out and found someone awesome who you're going to hear his name a couple different times this week because I think he's on the Leadership Summit as well. Uh, Introduce our guest for us today, Charlie. Yes. So Thomas or Tom, first of all, he is the vice president of Marshall Institute. Um, He is so passionate about education and growth and potential for other people. Uh, And, you know, I've really enjoyed his strategy and vision and just he's really growth um, and I guess forward thinking focused, people centric leadership and Mm -hmm. mindset. So he's going to talk about mindset for us on the leadership leadership. Summit almost said leadership launch pad because that's tying all that leadership yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, with Rob. Shout out Rob. Um, yeah. they're all friends. And um Tom is actually, you know, he's got a business um and marketing degree from the University of uh, somewhere in Scotland, Scotland, uh, which I think is really, really cool. So you'll hear his accent. Um, but he is in the US now, I think in North Carolina. And so it's just fun. You know, it's fun. I love being able to bring all these cultures together and really think about mindset. Um, I could go on and on because he's got, you know, this amazing wife who's created a book for us as well for our children. Um, I pre-ordered the book. Yay! It's in my, I've ordered it. I've paid for it. When it prints um, and goes to print, I'm, it'll be shipped to me. It's about, you know, being kind and how to be a good friend. And my four-year-old. Especially to those mean people. Any extra help we can get in that department, I'll take a book. We'll read it. <laughs> Absolutely. So that will be that will be coming out in September. So we'll go through that during the interview. Um, just super supportive and just a good human being. And we like to share those types of people with you. Yeah. So without further delay, here's our interview. Hey, Tom, thanks so much for joining me for the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm really excited to be able to share your story with our audience. Um, So let's go there. Tom, tell us, um, you know, who you are and what you do. Fantastic. Charlie, thanks so much for having me on. It's an honor. Really appreciate you taking the time to to chat today. Uh, So my name is Tom Furnival. I'm Vice President of Marshall Institute. And for those who aren't aware, Since 1975, we've been providing training and consulting services to industry around maintenance and reliability strategy, workflow, materials management. Yeah, and I'm just lucky that this maintenance community came together and they have been doing so many webinars and trainings, and that's how I got connected with you um, through them. But I was fascinated by your... LinkedIn resume, I guess is what you call it, but it says, you know, that you went from business studies and marketing to maintenance audit support. Like, how does this happen? And, you know, I I just love to hear about it. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. And I actually, um, you, um, in that um, leadership mindset presentation I delivered for Upkeep back in January, uh, you made a positive impression on me with the comments that you were listing. So as I was delivering the presentation, I was seeing the comments and you know questions coming from you, and I really appreciated 
I could see even just from text how engaged you were and interested in, in the topic. And that was that was great for me. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, uh, um, my my journey into the maintenance world um, is is uh, certainly a little different. My uh, my father was uh, in maintenance and reliability for um, 44 years with uh, Royal Dutch Shell Company. So he's in the oil and gas business. And uh, uh, my brothers and I grew up, you know, and my dad really wanted us to go into engineering. He's like following my footsteps. He was an instrument engineer. And we're like, no, nah, I, I, you know, we want to go business, you know, uh, let's, you know, we want, let's make some money, you know, right. young boys all influencing each other. Let's, let's make some money with, with, with no real sense of what we wanted to do. Um, so I went in business and marketing and um, uh, I had uh, the, the good fortune with my dad's connections at Shell to get some summer internships. So summer at college, first couple of years, I did landscape gardening. Last couple summers, I did uh, internships at Shell. So he didn't give up. He just influenced you a that, little bit. He, yeah, he won. He won. And I'm pleased. I'm very pleased and proud of where, where I am today and the journey that I've had. So um, ended up in the engineering and maintenance department, a bit of a fish out of water with, with, with my skill set, but welcomed by the group there and had some really fun um, assignments. My first assignment was... Um, writing a feasibility study on establishing the uh, a European equivalent of the North American Maintenance Excellence Award. So that was my 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 first project with Shell, and then later on ended up um, supporting the uh, maintenance effectiveness assessments with the offshore platforms. I mean, just and, dive right in. I mean, you just sounds like. I mean, how 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 does that happen? I mean, just just to show interest, or did somebody pick you out to say, okay, you work on this? Yeah, I think, you know, from the prior, um, uh, well, the, the first off, um, the, the um, uh, my, my manager and leader at the time, um, he, he's just a go-getter, you know, working for a big corporation, but just getting things done, very entrepreneurial, um, you know, taking things into his own hands. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, Alan Grieve, an incredible man. And um, yeah, he, he gave me a lot of you know, he trusted me and he gave me a, a wonderful opportunity. And we met in, so I was at the um, Aberdeen campus mm -hmm. with 5,000 other people. And he was headquartered in the Netherlands, but traveling all around the world. And no one else in this 5,000 person campus was working on that project, the, the feasibility study. So like, and I think I was 19 at the time, you know, I was sitting there surrounded by people you know, and saying, okay, well, no one else is working on this. I better figure this out. So it was, very it, cool, you know, very cool. I, I credit that experience with, you know, you know, from then on, I was very comfortable with, okay, there's a problem, there's a challenge, there's a project, what is it? Okay, break it down. Um, you know, that was, that was a huge experience for me. And then, you know, I think, I think I established um, enough of a reputation to be trusted and counted on and uh, adaptable enough. And, you know, they plugged me onto various projects and it was a great experience for me. That's wonderful. And it does sound like you have kind of this um, collection of careers here. You could go any direction and, and you've had so much um, that you've been, you know, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but just you that you've tried out, right? So what which one is your favorite? What do you like to do the most? Uh, you know, I, I, I really, uh, this is, I don't know if I'm going to answer your question here, but I really love growth and change and challenge. So I was, um, uh, you know, I've, I've only worked for Shell and um, in, in, I guess I'll say my professional life for Shell and Marshall Institute. So I've not worked for a variety of organizations, but I did have several different positions with Shell. And then coming to Marshall Institute, I joined them in marketing, then went to business development and then ran the training division. And, you know, since January, 2020, Vice President, talk about a baptism of fire right before, uh, you know, uh, a global the pandemic. Downturn yes. of pandemic. Um, so I loved with marketing, I love the, uh, the creative aspects, I think are a bit more evident and obvious that people would recognize as something that would be attractive to that role. But what I really loved is, and I actually liken marketing to maintenance in some ways, because I think marketing is heavily misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As I'm, I'm sure I'm you'll nodding. agree. Yes, uh, you <laughs> know. So, 
So for me, marketing, and I'm sure you, is, is central to business. It's about understanding customer needs and satisfying them profitably, giving value, and then obviously doing a good enough job that you can sustain your own business. So for me, it was core. And my goal at Marshall Institute was to make sure that marketing was present all throughout the value chain, you know, pro research, product development, you know, not just a communication or advertising arm to sell. We want this to be, we, we, we understand who our customers are and how we can serve them. And we'll make sure that that's present throughout the value chain. So I, I love that. Then into business development, it was um, connecting with people. You know, so marketing is, is a bit more on the mass scale and then bringing it down with business development to get on the phone with people, establish relationships, really get to, it actually um, brought a lot of the marketing um, kind of broad knowledge to a real fine point of, okay, I, ca I can now, you know, you know, John, I had, our research showed us that people were struggling with X, Y, Z, and now John's confirming that for me and putting a yes. face to it and a name and experience. So I love that. And then moved into running the, tra the training business or the training services business. So this is out outwardly facing training, not internal training. And it was a great opportunity to support people's careers. You know, we're, we literally ha have training sessions where folk will come in and, and, you know, unfortunately being in maintenance in many, many situations, not all, but many feeling undervalued, mm -hmm. you know, they're part of the firefighting crew, not valued by their, their organization. Um, and uh, as part of not being valued, they're not necessarily given the opportunities to receive training and professional de development with known and established career paths. Um, so they would come to us and I'm, you know, to our, you know, reputable competitors as well. I'm sure they've got the same stories. You know, they'll come to us, their eyes will be opened about how professional, you know, this space is and, 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 you know, how incredible it is and how much there is to learn, you know, how scientific it is, you know, uh, and it was amazing to see their eyes opened. And especially with, we have a mini diploma program. Um, that we run in partnership with North Carolina State University. It's called the Maintenance and Reliability Management Diploma Program. Individuals would leave the program and be promoted twice in six months. Wow. You know, it, it, it would, I mean, they, they had the talent, they had the skill, you know, it was always within them, but we provided the platform, you know, some confidence, some theory, you know, that would underpin their life experience. And, it, and you know, they just went for it from there. And it's wonderful to be in a position to help people um, in, in that capacity. Um, and then um, from the uh, what year and a half I've been in the VP position, you know, I'm, I'm very excited and loving the opportunity to support the organization at the strategic level now, you know, and support my colleagues and, and um, really be a key player in the vision and the goal setting of the organization. And then, and then building on, you know, the marketing, the marketing's not left me you know i'm still applying all those lessons well you can't to, right we told, we've no, already said it's essential it can't go anywhere <laughs> it can't go anywhere so i'm applying all those lessons um to my new role you know things i picked up from business development and then from from training as well and you know we are essentially or by um you know historically a training organization that over the years became an implementation organization through continued requests Okay. People would come to our training class and say, well, okay, you know, this makes sense. This is great, but can you help us? You know, so training is core to our DNA. And, you know, even when we're, we're implementing and consulting, our engagement is always educational. It's about imparting knowledge, building capability, not dependency on us as experts, but no, we're all capable of this and we're here to help you. So yeah, I, and you I know, it. I really th I think about um, kind of that whole journey and and the people within it, and you being a resource for them to be able to just sit in that space and know, okay, I appreciate what you're doing. I know that you have this in you. Here are some skills that are going to help you get to where you want to be. Um, just amazing and and lovely. And it does make me think about kind of the other thing that drew me to you, um, that leadership mindset. You know, I was going through. Uh, a training myself and um, just listening to you present that I'm just fascinated with it both because I believe that that mindset piece of leadership is is kind of what can trip you up if you you don't understand it um, but tell us what leadership mindset is for you 
Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So, so I'll try and give you a brief background to what to what led me to that as well. Is I've always been fascinated by potential. You know, just just innately, I wanted to achieve my potential, uh, and I'm excited for others to achieve their potential as well. So uh, that's that's been in me. Um, my wife is a behavioral therapist. So she has um, really illuminated mental health for me. And, you know, mindset is something that I think blends with mental health, but you don't necessarily have need, uh, you don't necessarily have mental health problems if, to have mindset deficiencies, you know, so there is crossover, but there, I think there is separation too. So, you know, it got me thinking about, you know, not from a clinical aspect, but just from a general mind care mindset perspective, what are the things that leaders can be thinking about? Um, how can they um, adjust their thinking? And so mindset, definition of mindset is the orientation of your beliefs, assumptions, and attitudes. So if we think about um, uh, um, attitudes, you know, pre-pandemic life or, you know, during pandemic life for some, driving to work, the commute, if you're stuck in traffic, what's your attitude about that? OK, you start you've you've you've, um, you've got a 30 minute commute bumper to bumper or whatever. It's an hour. Um, how does that start your day? How are you thinking about that? What's your attitude towards that traffic? Does it set? Does it put you in a bad mood? Then you hit a meeting first thing in the morning. You, what's your attitude towards meetings? Oh, I don't like meetings. OK, so you've just had a commute that you don't like that set you, you know, set the wrong tone for the day. Then you go into a meeting that you're frustrated with and the attitude to those two things could set the tone for the rest of your day and the interactions with other people. Um, assumptions, what assumptions do we make about ourselves or other people? And then the deepest part of that is, is beliefs. You know, what are our ingrained beliefs about ourselves and about other people? So, I, you know, I took it upon myself to say, okay, well, I, I've not, I, I did research. I couldn't find anything at the time. This was um, 2018 going into 2019. Um, on the leadership mindset. Nothing was out there that I could find. So, you know, going back to my early shell days, the kind of DIY, okay, I've got this big task. Well, I'm going to do it for myself. I'll create my own, you know, leadership mindset um, framework. So I just spent time doing a bit of research, thinking about it myself. And I put seven elements together to, the, to you know, for the, for the leadership mindset. And that's uh, for me, purpose, motivation, potential, responsibility, challenge change and outcomes and i'll just highlight on a few of those so purpose you know this has been well documented recently like simon sinek's why you know how do you see things do you view yourself the work you do by just the tasks that you're doing or by the larger value that you or your organization is delivering um uh, potential what are your beliefs about your potential do you believe that you've already met your potential or do you, be, do you believe that you have unlimited potential? Because the answer to that will affect how you think and how you behave. Uh, I think for me, number one, just understanding your beliefs, what, what, what they are, spend some time there to even figure out what, what you value and what you believe. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So from there, um, I wrote an article in 2019 that was published in Make World magazine that kind of showcase the leadership mindset and the seven, seven elements for the first time. And then I kept tweaking it, adjusting it, refining it, and then gave the presentation with the maintenance community uh, back in January, in which I shared the leadership mindset assessment. And, and, and it's a very simple, short, um, you know, like at scale, one to 10, how much do you agree with the statement for each of the seven elements? And you hit the nail on the head. The primary purpose of that assessment is to get you to think about your beliefs with the ultimate goal of identifying beliefs that are holding you back and reframing them. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about, we're not talking about reframing to lie to ourselves. It's about how can I credibly believe this? It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. You know, so a simple one would be, you know, I, you know, I'm not good at something. Uh, and you could say, well, actually, in reality, I've not really practiced enough to be good. So if I do want to become good at that thing, you know, I can put in the time and practice. 
And we recognize that it takes time to get good at something. So I'm, I, I don't expect it to happen tomorrow. So instead of saying I'm not good at something, you say, you know what? I'm going to practice more at that. Um, or I haven't practiced enough. So relieve yourself of the burden of judgment of not being good at something that you actually haven't earned to be good at. And just be okay with that. Or if there's something that a, a, you know, a parent or a teacher said to you that stuck with you, mm. reframe and, and move on. Because, you know, for me, and, you know, you, you would have remembered from the presentation, this mi mindset truly sets the trajectory for your life, you know, affecting the decisions that you make and the actions you take. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I love to share this story because um, for me, it was such an eye opening experience. I was sitting around the table and they were going to call me to read out loud, you know, off this piece of paper. And. And I'm like, why am I getting so nervous about this? I mean, somebody told me I couldn't read when I was little or something. And I was like, Charlie, you can read, you read every day. Like, you know, <laughs> and, and it was just like this weight was lifted off. And I'm like, oh, I can just change the way that I'm talking to myself just a tad bit. And it makes all the difference. So um, I am curious Absolutely. though, you mentioned your wife um, and her work. And um, I'm curious, like, does that... Um, help you towards this mindset information? Has she been a resource there for you as well? Absolutely. I've been bouncing it off her, uh, you know, since, since the beginning. Um, uh, yeah, she's been an invaluable resource. And, uh, you know, as well as, you know, feedback and, and reviews and edits, she's also such a good example to watch just by her actions. You know, she is so free of judgment, it's unbelievable. Whereas, whereas I am definitely my own worst critic. You know, very, very, and that's, that's part of what got me into the mindset piece as well, is just realizing how kind of tough and critical I was on myself. And it's okay to expect high standards, um, but not weigh yourself down with, un, with unrealistic expectation. Again, you shouldn't expect to be good at something if you've not put in the work. Um, you know, so don't be burdened by that. Put in the work and enjoy the journey of, of, of growth and um, skill development. So, you know, just to watch her and see her interact with people for me is just that um, everyday example of, okay, well, this is the behavior in action. This is mindset in action right here. So, yeah, she's been a wonderful resource uh, right from the get go. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've probably got a lot of free sessions and, uh, uh, free reviews over the over the years that I would have had to pay for. From, oh, it'll benefit her else. in the long run. It'll benefit her. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah that's right. Uh, stable people are, 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 you know, in control of themselves is always great. Um, that's right. Well, so I am, I am proud. I know you're proud of her. Um, she's got a great accomplishment coming up. Um, if you want to talk about that now, it's a great time. I'd oh, love fantastic. To hear about it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. So she, she has, um, a, uh, a three book deal with a psychology publisher um, and her first book is coming out this September. And it's a, it's a three part series um, targeted towards um, young kids on social um, and emotional skills. And the first book is The Not So Friendly Friend. Her name is Christina Furnival. That's out pre-order on Amazon right now. And you know, the, the mental health mindset um, you know, is so important for us as adults, um, largely because we weren't necessarily taught the right skills when we were younger. Mm -hmm. so, and then go through a pandemic where your life has just shifted completely. Um, these resources are going to be so helpful to our children exactly. and to us as we're reading them with our children or, um, you know, make sure that you read through it yourself to kind of give you uh, the healing. Exactly. And it's, you know, it's a book about setting healthy boundaries for friendship. You know, and what that comes down to is dealing, dealing with dealing with bullies and and dealing with people, you know, who are kind to you one day and not the next, you know, and the, and the book was born from our daughter at three years old, having that experience at preschool. Mm -hmm. Someone was friendly to her one day and then extremely cold to her the next. And we were blown away. We thought this was high school behavior. But to see it at the preschool level, we thought, OK, well, this isn't going to be the only experience here. Other people will be. Uh, going through this with their children as well. So it's about understanding what you expect from other people. You know, this applies to us as adults as well. What are the boundaries that you set for yourself that you will live by, you'll treat other people by as well. And if you see people breaking your boundaries that you have the confidence to, to, to speak up and, and tell them that, look, you broke my boundaries, that I don't accept this for friendship. 
if you want to act this way, I'll be happy to be your friend. Otherwise, you know, please, please leave me alone. This isn't acceptable. It's so good. And like you said, it will help adults. I mean, I think we all kind of get frustrated at times because we're allowing people to break those boundaries we have. Um, so again, making that list of what they are and knowing what they are and, and standing by it. Um, and that, that does take some confidence to, um, speak out on that. But I think once you sit around and you talk about it and you know about it, then you, you, it's just like, this, just like your values, right? You know where you stand. And so you're not going to cross that line or let it be crossed. So absolutely. Well, well said. Um, I could talk to you forever. Um, and I would love to meet your wife and talk to her too. Uh, so just as we've been talking though, is there anything else that you want to leave our listeners with? Yeah, I do. I, I, you know, uh, on the leadership piece, my, my definition of leadership is, is about realizing um, potential. Okay, so leaders help um, people or situations realize potential. Um, and that comes down to behavior, not position or title. You can choose to be a leader today. Okay, doesn't you don't have to get a certain title um, and work on your skill set, work on your mindset um, and uh, really get down to the beliefs, understanding what beliefs might be holding you back. Uh, I'll be, uh, please get in touch with me. Um, Thomas J. Furnival on LinkedIn, or you can email me t furnival at marshallinstitute.com. I'll send you the assessment that you can take. But even shy of that, as, as you go through the day, if you, negative thoughts or non-supportive thoughts um, are coming in your head, or if you're behaving in a way that you know that really isn't supporting your growth or the potential of your team or the people around you or the project that you're on, dig deeper. Why are you behaving that way? Why did you think that way? And it's not an easy thing to do, um, but it's incredibly valuable because you get to, you really understand what are those beliefs that are controlling you in a, in a you know, way that you weren't aware of before. And you do, have the, you do have the ability to identify them. You do have the power to change them. And in doing so, it will change your life, the experience of it, and I believe the destination as well. I love it. Uh, so I love the part where you said that kind of in that assessment, you talk about responsibility and I really believe all of us are leaders. We just have to you know, take that responsibility to go forward with it. Absolutely. Completely well, thank agree. you. Thank you so much for your time today. I can't wait to do it again. And um, yeah, I'll of course share all your information in the show notes and look forward to talking with you again soon. Uh, Charlie, thanks so much for having me on. I'll, I'll be back anytime you want. Me. Awesome. And we're back. Charlie, thanks so much for bringing Tom on the show. He was awesome. And uh, one last quick plug. He is on that leadership summit that we've been talking about that's coming out today, Monday. Today. Yes. Yeah, Monday the 30th. If you missed it, you can still sign up for it uh, to view later as well. But a really good program that Charlie's put together with our contacts, just talking about leadership and mindset and how you can be a better leader and how you can become a leader and all these things. So check it out. Yes, it's going to be great. Um, okay, so that brings us to the end of our show, which I don't like, but I'm so happy that you are here with us. Thanks for listening. Do us a favor, rate and review the podcast. Y'all are thinking, oh, this is just something she says every week and she says the exact same thing. But so this is me saying it differently. Please leave us a review. That actually helps us show up for other listeners. It helps them find the show. So uh, if you really like it, wherever you are, just take a minute and say, Bethany is great. I love the podcast. Yes. No, you don't have to say my name, but uh, leave a leave a review, please. It really helps us um, show up for other listeners. So. Yeah. And mention us at Empowering Pumps or using the hashtag Empowering Industry Podcast. Um, you can email us at empowering, I'm sorry, at podcast at empoweringpumps.com. I totally screwed that one up this time. So <laughs> anyway, hopefully that'll be in a blip. I've been missing your blips, by the way. <laughs> Okay. That's, well, because we've been getting better. It. When we started doing video, we didn't we didn't have as many mess ups. So there's nothing funny to pull. Oh. We'll see. Okay. Well, that wasn't anyway. funny. We'll be back every Monday with a new episode. So until then, be empowering. We should go dancing.
Here's a picture of me at four. Love it. Is she cute? My grandma's responsible for this, I'm sure. <laughs> Love it.